In this video, we're going to learn how to use custom fonts with Text Mesh Pro in Unity. This will allow us to add effects to our fonts like gradients and weird outlines and use them the same as normal text. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So this is our goal. We have a bunch of knights walking around with the name above their heads. And as you can see, the name is written in a very nice font with a bunch of nice effects. And this really is a font, as you can see, since all of these knights have different names. So we are using it exactly the same as any text. So the goal is to be able to write text using a custom font with custom effects that we can modify on our texture. All right, so let's get to it. So here is our testing scene. There are a bunch of characters just walking around. Each of them has a unique name and this font obviously does not match what they look like. So that's what we want to sort. Now, the first thing that we need is a font. There are many websites that have lots of free fonts. So just Google to find something over here. I have a pretty nice unique font. It's called archeologic apps and it's a nice medieval font. So it suits our sprites. Now, if you're using the old text mesh component, you can simply create a new text mesh. And here you could just drag the font straight into there and everything would work. So just like that, our font is displayed using the text mesh component. However, with the new text mesh pro, if we go in here, create a new 3d object text mesh pro here, as you can see, we cannot drag the font directly into there. So the text mesh pro requires a bit more work, but it also gives us a lot more options. Now, the first thing that we need is to make sure that text mesh pro is installed. So when you create a new text mesh pro, a window should appear. This window allows you to import the essentials. So just click on that. And with that, you can now use the text mesh pro. So you can look into the inspector in order to see the various options that you have available. So just at a glance, you can see that we have a lot more options compared to the basic text mesh and the text also looks a lot better. Okay. So for the custom font, as you can see, this requires a font asset. So we cannot drag a font, which means we need to first convert this font into a font asset. So for that, we go here into the window text mesh pro and the font asset creator. So this window appears. And as you can see up here, we do have a field for a font, so we can now drag it. And now let's just hit generate with the default parameters. And yep, here it is. You can see the actual texture that was generated. So now let's hit save. So here on the project files, we now have our font asset. So we can now go into the text mesh pro and we can now drag our font asset. And there it is. There's our nice font. So the characters are instantiated through this prefab. So let's simply open this, go into the text mesh pro and drag our font asset. And now let's test. And yep, our characters are now using our custom font, which looks much better compared to these sprites. Okay. So this is the way to just add a new simple font to your game. However, the cool thing about it is that we have an Atlas texture. So if we have a texture, that means we can modify it in any imaging program. So before we start modifying our texture, let's look into these options to see what they do. So up here, we have the source font file. Then we have the sampling point size. It will automatically calculate the maximum size it can use to fit all the characters inside the texture. Then the padding, which is the most important when dealing with custom fonts that you want to add effects. Essentially, if you add something outside the font, like for example, an outline, you need enough padding to be able to draw it. So in this case, since we're going to add a nice outline, let's increase it to 10. Then the packing method, which is how close the glyphs are packed together. So fast for the most part is fine. Then we have the Atlas resolution. This is going to be the final size of our texture. So this will either limit your character set or the character size in order to fit everything in the texture. So for simple usages, 512 by 512 is probably fine, but if you add a lot of extra padding or a lot of extra characters, then you can simply increase this and go all the way up to as far as you need. Then we have the character set. So this will depend on what you want to do. For example, if you were making some sort of special font for a head counter, then you would really only need numbers. But in this case, we want names. So ASCII is probably fine. Alternatively, you can also select custom characters and in here, put all the characters that you're going to need. However, do remember that the font file itself needs to have that character. If it doesn't, then you won't actually see it. Then we have the font style. 
Then for the render mode, these have to do with how the fonts are rendered. Now the first ones are bitmap fonts, which means your font will only look good at that exact size. So for most cases, you want to stick with distance field of either 16 or 32. The difference in these two is one of precision, so it will depend on what you want to use it for, but for most cases, 16 will do just fine. And finally, we have the kerning pairs. So checking this just gets the kerning pairs from the font file. So with all the options covered, here is our font texture, and we hit save. And inside the font asset, you can see the texture atlas. However, for the goal we're trying to achieve here of modifying our texture, using this render mode will not be very helpful. So instead, we go in here, and instead of creating a distance field 16, let's create a smooth. And now we have this texture, which is much more clear and much more perfect for our current goal. So you have to keep in mind what your texture is going to be used for. If you don't want to add a lot of special effects directly into the texture, then using this texture would be better. But since we're trying to add some special effects, this one won't be better. So we hit save. And now we need some way of getting this texture so we can edit it. So for that, we select the font asset and go up here to the gear icon and simply extract Atlas. And upon clicking, there you go, here's our new Atlas, which is a simple PNG. So now we can open this in any sort of image program. So in my case, I have it open here in Photoshop. And now this is a texture like any other, so we can modify this in any way. The only requirement is that we stay within the padding area so we don't spill our effects onto other characters. So let's add some effects. So here's our modified font with a bunch of nice effects. Now that we have our texture, let's save it as our PNG. So here in the project files, you can see the original texture and our modified texture. Now we need to apply this to our font. So for that, we select the material inside our font asset. And in here, first of all, since this is supposed to be a bitmap font, we go in here, Text Mesh Pro, and select Bitmap Custom Atlas. And here on the debug settings, we have a field for the font atlas, and we simply drag our modified font atlas. And there it is, there's our font with a nice drop shadow, a stroke, and some nice colors. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Now we can go here, we can edit our text with anything we want. Because essentially this is working just like normal text, so this is normal text. We can write anything as long as we have the characters in order to display it. Okay, so now on the character prefab, in here I already have the Text Mesh Pro using this font and this material. So everything should be working, let's run the game. And yep, there's our characters and each of them has a name with our custom font, custom effects and custom anything. So you now know how to create a font asset for any given font, extract the atlas from that font asset and modify the texture in any way you want in any image program. Finally, you know how to import it back into the game in order to be used as a normal font. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.